Now we will talk about the normal composition of CSF and we will also discuss that what are the changes in CSF due to different types of infections of the meninges. Is that right? Uh, we say that inflammation of meninges is called meningitis and usually in the meningitis there is inflammation mainly of pia matter and arachnoid matter and pia matter with arachnoid matter together are called leptomeninges. So meningitis is, meningitis is defined as inflammation of leptomeninges. Is that right? And we will see in this lecture that when someone has leptomeningi, uh, meningeal inflammation, what are the changes in CSF? First we'll talk about normal, that first of all color of CSF. In a normal person, the color of CSF is it's clear, crystal clear. Is that right? It's crystal clear, number one, about the color. Number two, the cells in CSF. Do you think uh, normally CSF has any type of cells? Yes, please. CSF has what type of? Only few lymphocytes. You know, lymphocytes are the cells of the connective tissue and uh, extracellular fluid. And you are allowed to have less than 5 lymphocytes in CSF per cubic millimeter. And there should be no neutrophil and no RBC. In a normal CSF, there should be no red blood cell, there should be no neutrophil and few lymphocytes means that lymphocytes are less than, yes, five. less than 5 per cubic millimeter. Is uh, uh, milliliter, per cubic milliliter. So in the cells we say these are the Neutrophils, neutrophils are you know having multilobated nucleus. Neutrophils, normally they should be no neutrophil. They should be no neutrophils, and there may be lymphocytes. How many lymphocytes? Lymphocytes have a big nucleus with very little cytoplasm, right? They should be less than five lymphocytes per cubic milliliter. Is that right? Then we come to glucose. Glucose in glucose level in CSF. You know that glucose is transported from the choroid plexus not freely. And usually CSF level of glucose is about two-thirds of the level in the plasma. Is that right? So you can say normally glucose level in CSF is 66% of the plasma glucose level or blood glucose, plasma glucose concentration. It means whenever you do lumbar puncture, it's wise to take the venous blood glucose level as well. Is that right? For example, if when, when at the moment uh, when you do the lumbar puncture, at that very time, if blood glucose level is 100 milligram per DL, then glucose level in the CSF should be around 60, 65. But if glucose level in the blood is 70, then of course lower value will be acceptable in CSF. Is that right? So usually we say that glucose level in the CSF is about two-third of the glucose level in the blood. Am I clear? Then proteins. Plasma proteins are not freely allowed to move into CSF, right? And CSF is very poor in proteins. I mean, the normally the upper level of proteins and CSF is 0.4 grams per liter. It is very low level. The plasma protein level is how much? Yes, please. Plasma protein level is how much? 7 to 8 grams per DL. 7 to 8 grams per DL. Or 70 to 80 grams per liter. Plasma proteins level you should know as you know the name of your friends. Every doctor must know all the time. It's a very common value. And one liter of blood, one liter of plasma, there are 70 to 80 grams of plasma proteins. But in one liter of CSF, plasma protein may be just 0.4 gram. It's very, very low. Is that right? These are some basic values. Now, 
we compare the changes in CSF in three types of infections, right? Uh, especially, yes, pyogenic meningitis, pyogenic bacterial meningitis. What is meant by pyogenic? Yes, pus forming. Like pyogenic meningitis may be due to meningococcus or it may be due to E. coli or it may be due to streptococcus, staphylococcus, is that right? Pyogenic meningitis, the bacteria which produce pus. Second meningitis, I can talk about tuberculous meningitis. Tuberculous meningitis. And third is viral meningitis. Right? Now, pyogenic meningitis, first of all, what will happen to the color? Yes, what will happen to the color? Color will become yellow or turbid or turbid. It will not be crystal clear CSF because there's pus in that. Is that right? But when you compare the tuberculous meningitis with pyogenic meningitis and tuberculous meningitis because fibrin leaks into CSF, so there's a web, there's a turbid color with some web formation in the CSF. So in case of tuberculosis, we say that there is turbid color and there, with that there is just fibrin web, cob web or fibrin web and viral meningitis. Virus does not produce pus. Viral inflammation is not so severe that fibrinogen from the blood should leak, right? So usually it is clear CSF, right? So here CSF is clear in viral case, right? So this is gross appearance of CSF. It may be yellow and turbid, pyogenic meningitis. In case of turbid with fibrin cobweb, that is meningitis. And if you know there is meningitis, but uh, CSF is clear, you must think of viral meningitis. Is that right? Then we come to the cells. Now, in the past, there are always a lot of neutrophils. So in pyogenic meningitis, uh, neutrophils level will be very, very high, right? So there's very high levels of neutrophils in case of pyogenic meningitis. Which cells we are talking about? We are talking about neutros. But in tuberculosis meningitis, because tuberculosis is a chronic inflammation and tuberculosis is a chronic inflammation and neutrophils are the cells of acute inflammation, so neutrophils are not abundant in tuberculous meningitis, they are very less. And in viral also, neutrals are very less. So, if in the CSF, you find a lot of neutrophil, which infection is indicated? Pyogenic bacteria. Then we come to the lymphocytes. Then we come to the lymphocytes. In acute infection, lymphocytes are less. Because lymphocytes take long time to accumulate at the site of inflammation. Acute inflammation, most of the pyogenic bacteria produce chemotactic agent which attract the neutrophil more and lymphocyte less. So in acute inflammation, right, acute meningitis due to pyogenic inflammation, right, acute meningitis due to pyogenic bacteria will show a lot of neutrophils but very little lymphos. Is that right? But if you look at CSF from a patient with tuberculous meningitis, tuberculous meningitis is acute or chronic? It's a chronic. And when there's a classical saying that lymphocyte accumulate in viral infection and chronic infection. Lymphocyte normally accumulate in viral infection and chronic infections. And acute pyogenic mainly collect neutrophils. So what you will find here? Lot of lymphocytes. Lot of lymphocytes. Right? And in viral also, you will find a lot of lymphocytes. It means that when you have a lot of neutrophils, it is pyogenic. When there are a lot of lymphocytes, then it may be tuberculosis, it may be viral. But there are other ways how to differentiate these two from each other. Is that clear up to now? Now, we talk about glucose. Remember, bacteria love to take, eat up glucose. 
the virus are not bothered about glucose. Is that right? So it's very clear that CSF level of glucose will be low in pyogenic meningitis and CSF level of glucose will be low in tuberculosis meningitis. Low means that it will be less than 50% of plasma glucose level or blood glucose level. CSF level of glucose will be less than 50% of the plasma glucose level. Because pyogenic bacteria, every type of bacteria love to take the glucose. Bacteria are usually glycophilic, they love the glucose. Pyogenic as well as tuberculosis. So in this case also, the glucose level is less than 50% of plasma or blood glucose level. Here, yeah, blood glucose level is more than 50%. So CSF glucose level is more than 50% of blood or plasma glucose level. So what really happens? That we can say that in viral, <coughs> in viral meningitis, glucose level in CSF is normal. Is that right? So normal glucose level with a lot of lymphos point to viral. But lot of lymphos with normal glucose is viral. But lot of lymphos with low glucose is bacterial. And chronic bacterial at the top must be TB. And lot of neutrals with low glucose point to pyogenic. Is that right? Then we talk about the proteins. Now, the CSF protein levels, what happened to it? Of course, whenever there's inflammation, there's increased permeability in the microcirculation. So proteins level will go up. In every meningitis, protein levels go up. But viral, viral inflammation disturbs the microcirculation very little. It does disturb, but slightly. So here is uh, here plasma, so CSF protein level goes only mildly up. Is that right? But in case of tuberculosis, CSF protein level goes severely up. And even in pyogenic, it is moderate to severely up. You can understand why. Because when bacterial infection is there, right, it disrupts the microcirculation and there's increased permeability. So a lot of proteins leak from vascular system to the CSF. Am I clear? Right? But viral inflammation does not disrupt the microcirculation so much and does not increase uh, micro permeability so much that a lot of proteins do not shift. So normal protein level is what? 0.4 grams per liter. So here it may be up to 1 gram. From 0.4 it may go up to 1 gram but usually it's always less than 1 gram. In viral infections CSF proteins are usually less than 1 gram. But in these cases it is usually more than 1 gram right or we can say very simply that in viral infection and in viral infection plasma pro, uh, csf protein slightly increase and in pyogenic infection it moderately increase in tuberculosis infection it severely increase now look rather than making memorization of this chart remember the very basic thing without looking at that a person who comes with suppose meningococcal infection meningococcal meningitis or pneumococcal meningitis or staphylococcal meningitis or streptococcus meningitis or E. coli meningitis or any. These organisms are pyogenic. So what will happen? CSF will become turbid color due to pus because they have made pus and there will be a lot of neutrophils which is a feature of acute inflammation. Very f there will be lymphocytes but not as much as neutrophil and lot of proteins are there and glucose is down. Is it difficult to remember? Then you compare it with tuberculosis. Everything is similar except few. In pyogenic bacteria and tuberculosis bacteria, both eat up the glucose. In both cases, glucose will be low. Both will damage the microcirculation and both will take the proteins up. Is that right? Both will make the, uh, that color turbid. Especially there will be cobweb formation in tuberculosis. What is the real difference? The real difference is in the cells. That is there's neutrals, it is pyogenic acute. If there are lymphos, it is tuberculosis. And the how about viral? Viral is, color is clear most of the time. Secondly, 
viral meningitis neutrophils are not there it is lymphos and li viral meningitis if it is lymphos you can differentiate it from tb which is also lymphos that in tb glucose goes down but viral glucose does not go down and in tb proteins go too high TB, tuberculosis is very very disruptive but viral is usually not that much disruptive so proteins are not that high now i will ask you a question we have a csf here turbid color lot of neutrophils what is this but what will happen to glucose if you check and what will happen to proteins if you check high i bring another you can say bottle CSF is clear. What do you think? It may be normal. It may be normal, my friend. Oh my God. What happened? Vision, not necessarily. Sometimes you do lumbar puncture and due to some other reason. So, CSF is clear. If I say CSF is clear, lymphos are three, neutrophils are absent. Now listen carefully. Neutrophils are absent. Proteins are high. I'm making really trick with you. Again, listen. CSF color is clear. Right? Lymphos are no normal. Is that right? Neutrals are not there. RBCs are not there. Glucose is normal. Some proteins are high. And those proteins are immunoglobulin. This is some immune-mediated disease to central nervous system. Some immune-mediated disease. Immunological disorder. Not infection. Is that right? Okay, but uh, this is not that important at this level. But at your level it is. Now, uh, you tell me, I bring another bottle. A bottle fall down, but anyway, hypothetically. In this bottle, CSF is clear. Lymphos are high, glucose is normal. Proteins are slightly high, it is viral. Is that right? So again, in the bottle you find a lot of neutrophils with high protein, high glu low glucose. Pyogenic, lot of lymphos with low glucose and high proteins, tuberculosis, lot of lymphos with normal glucose and little increase in proteins, viral. viral. This is difficult. Now I'll tell you another thing. You find the CSF in lot of RBCs, and if you let the CSF bottle stand for some time, at the top of the bottle there is some yellow coloration. We call it xanthochromia. We call that thing xanthochromia. I'll be impressed you if you tell me. You do the lumbar puncture and there are a lot of RBCs in CSF and there is some yellow color at the top of the CSF. What do you think? Hemorrhage. Yeah, hemorrhage. Very good. Which hemorrhage? Subarachnoid hemorrhage. Because in subarachnoid hemorrhage, blood will mix with the CSF and it will spread all over RBCs and some RBCs will rupture and release the contents which give yellow color. Is that right? So in subarachnoid hemorrhage, what is the main change in CSF? Of course, a lot of RBCs. RBCs. And at the top of that uh, bottle, you will find xanthochromia or yellow coloration. Right? Am I clear?